You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Jesse's Path. Now, since the last episode, uh, we were giving our lovely girlfriend, a, our lovely fluff girl, a bath, and we saw a mysterious figure walking around outside. I wonder who it can be. <laughs> So anyway, guys, let's get right into it and see just who is prowling around outside and spying on us. Hmm. I wonder who it is. Alright. We look outside again, I don't see anyone. Maybe I'm mistaken, or nervous, or paranoid. It could have been anything. Oh, Lord! gonna have to edit a little bit of that. <laughs> Jessie helps out of the tub, goes down in her paws, and shakes wildly back and forth. Water sprays from the sea from the floor to the ceiling, covering me from head to toe with suds and bubbles. I close my eyes under the deluge. Sopping wet, I reach blindly for a towel. Ha! Ah! In the middle of the drawing off, I open my eyes to see Grace's mouth agape. In her hand is a metal bucket overflowing with fish. Where am I going to put my mackerel? Jesse stands there, covered in sopping wet fur, at a snarl building. Aren't you going to eat them? Can't eat them all at once. Grace, get out! Marion's going to love cleaning all this up. Now, Grace, out! Instead, Grace saunters over to the bathtub and empties her bucket into the tub before heading back to the open door. Well, don't throw the fish out with the bathwater. <laughs> hey, Jesse, the bath towel was, uh, pretty hot. <laughs> After her interruption, it takes a good while to calm Jessie's fury. I satiate her with some liver and cheese, and lots of scratches. We find a spot in the sun to relax and dry off. We pretend the surprise visit from her sister never happened. Grace has taken a shine to Jessie's new appearance. It's one of very few things that has made her life easier during this transition. So, now that I'm fresh as a daisy, we need to head to Glenn's livery yard to fetch a monk. Glenn's? The stable? Aye! Glenn's been known to have a dog or two up for barter. I'll offer up one for Marion Springhogs. We'll just hope old Glenn work in future payments. A dog? You know I was joking last night. You... well, we... promised Marion the services of a sheepdog. And contrary to your white lies, I don't think Murdoch has a magically trained pup that can herd his neighbor's flock mind nightly. Even though I can be well trained. <laughs> I bet you can. I hold her chin in my hand. Then get my cap and boots. We're headed out. Jesse gets on all fours and runs into the house to gather my supplies. Oh my god! She returns with my time in her mouth and the two boots in front of her paws. She sits upright, panting and begging for my attention. She's so adorable! I take the hat from her mouth and give her a loving tussle upon the head. A good girl. Ah! <laughs> oh lord, she said it! Thank you, master. I nearly faint from attraction. I never knew role-playing was this exciting. <clears throat> well, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's get going. <laughs> so we can get home faster? Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, aren't you forgetting something? God, why is she so cute? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> she tilts her head, and I can't tell if she's, if she's playing or has truly forgotten. Ought you wear something yourself? Me? Aw, oh, and I thought you liked me in, the fur, in my fur coat. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Sure. Somehow, I gathered my wits long enough to get Jessie on the road instead of into the bedroom. She wears a proper outfit, and it feels unusual to see her out of her, out of her flashy red dress. I doubt it's self-consciousness at play. The dress simply needs to be washed. <laughs> As he doesn't let the clothes stop her from leaning into the canine side of her hybrid form, the lines between her forms are blurring more all the time. Nope, let me save it right here, guys. I hope it means she is becoming even more comfortable. It certainly is entertaining to watch and to participate. No, God! She bounds all around me, picking up Aaron's sticks and making me toss them for her to chase. Oh, God, what? Is that drool on her chin? Oh, I don't even want to dwell on that. Where do you get all of that energy? I love half of it. It's all inside me. I can hardly sit still anymore. The only problem arises when she struggles to get back to human. Jesse, you need to bottle up your fangs. At least for a short while. They're not fangs. Those are my natural teeth. There's a reason they're called canine teeth, Malcolm. Well, they're not going to help us with our bargaining today. That's for sure. Are you kidding? One flesh of these babies and we'll get whatever we want. I take her by the hand, trying to calm her internal excitement. I don't believe it helps at all, though. <laughs> Jessie taps her palm to her forehead. The sheep. The sheep? I try to rack my brain. I've seen so many sheep in my life. It was at Glenn's farm, you silly goose. Then it hits me. I can't believe it didn't trigger my childhood memories earlier. Just saying the name. You convinced me you could catch a sheep with your bare hands. I was trying to impress you. I had no idea that sheep just sit there like napping lumps. Lo and behold, those sheep were not having it with our antics. I chased them around the farm all afternoon until Farmer Glenn noticed and came out cursing and shouting. But I got that lamb, by gum. You stood there frozen, holding a bleeding sheep trying to catch your breath. I was so proud of myself. I honestly can't believe you remember that. Of course I do. After you dropped the sheep, we took off running. I twisted my ankle to something terrible during our madcap escape. I had to tell my parents we were out playing tag. Sheep tag! <laughs> Jesse just about doubles over from laughter. Reminiscing like this, it's a wonderful feeling. It puts me in such at ease, with her, with myself, with my own life. These memories aren't just nostalgic. They're carefree times, moments I want to relive, to bury the more recent past. I can catch anything I want now. That is a fact. The timing is terrible. Young Flory Fairfell, young Flory Fairfell comes soaring down the path of delivery, her barrel hoop and stick flying by her side. Oh Jesus! Unfortunately, Jessie's instincts kick in once again, and she starts to chase the little girl's toy. She tears off down the rocky pathway. Jessie, come back! But she's at full speed. Her front paws are visible, stomping and leaping all around the child. Save it right here before she eats a small child. Wait. Toast? Okay. Oh, your toes are so pretty and fluffy. Oh, my grandma, what big teeth you have. That's an adorable little girl. <laughs> Look her eyes. Her eye color is very, very cool. By the time I catch up, Jessie finally looks embarrassed. She also appears to have come to her senses, crouching like a real person next to the girl in her fallen hoop. Oh, they're simply gloves, Flory. I pet them? <laughs> oh, well, yes, if you want. Aww. Jessie lets Flory pet her paws, and stands and retrieves the little girl's hoop. I'm sorry for interrupting your game. Hope I didn't spoil anything. Nope. Just going to see my muffer at the bake at the bakery shop. Muffer. Ah, uh, sorry. Ah, I'm getting his voice mixed up. Muffer. Ah, mother. Mother. Tell her you deserve the biggest fern cake. You're such a sweetheart. Thank you, Miss Doggy. You deserve the biggest biscuit. Biscuit. Well, thank you. I will tell Mr. Malgum. 
Mr. Malcolm to fetch me the largest biscuit in the village. Goodbye. <laughs> what a sweet little girl. Flory gathers her toys and runs off down the path. I look to Jessie, wanting to chastise her for letting her guard down so... But can really only really offer support. Are you alright? I'm so sorry. I'm not sure what got into me. It's okay. Nothing bad happened. This time, I think to myself. Let's go get you a biscuit. <laughs> we try to laugh it off, but the mood has shifted. Oh, it's fun and playful now. It feels less than harmless. I'm not sure Mr. Glenn will believe paw pads are some type of expensive gloves. Oh my god. Oh my god, they're so cute! As we approach the livery, we, see a, we both see a large bundle of wriggling puppies in a stone pen by the stables. Not just any puppies, Welsh corgi puppies. I suppress the urge to laugh. It's like a dozen little sergeant stumpies. My mother spots us and starts, the mother starts us and starts to bark. Farmer Glenn is sitting by the barn doors, drinking out of a teacup. He looks up at the commotion. I wave to catch his attention, and he makes his way over to us. As if reading my thoughts, Jessie pulls her hands out of her pockets. She waves too, looking pointedly at me. Ah, oh, shit. I messed with my DPI! Down. Down. There we go. That's better, I think. Okay, that's better. Alright. Her paws are back to hands, thank goodness. Hello! How goes? It brings you two out this way on such a glorious day. You look up to the clouds. Is, is he seeing something we don't? We're here for a dog. We'd like to get a herding dog for my sister Marion and her cows. Yes, <clears throat> I noticed the corgis. Do you have anything uh, more intelligent? Good old Sergeant Stumpy was a swale dog. Courageous too, but none too bright. There was the time he mistook our coffee ration for a pile of his own scraps. I didn't think he'd ever stop zooming around chasing the trench rats. Fastest could I've ever seen, apart from Jesse. Er, I was picturing a border collie or a sheltie. Something easily trained. Intelligent. <clears throat> Sorry. Intelligent. These little fellows are the smartest dogs in the animal kingdom. Look at them. I do. Half are scratching their ears, the other half are asleep. They're just adorable. I can't argue with that. And for me, they do bring to mind some of the better moments, some of the brighter moments of a bleak time. Save it right here. Alright, I've got hogs coming this spring. What do you say? A pig for a dog? A pig? Mr. Campbell, that's a lopsided deal. I'll have meals for weeks, and all, and all you'll have is trouble on your hands. <laughs> As if on cue, the pups began barking. Aww. Jesse heads to the pen and kneels down to pet them all one by one, they're not checking for the brightest shining star. These pups need good homes. I'll take a side of rib chops when you're good and ready. No hurry at all. Go find your newest and hardest worker. The puppies are excitable and energetic. One takes a quick shine to Jessie, sniffing out her feet and nipping at her ankles. Do they have names yet? Nay. That task is left to the lucky owner. Oh. Jessie holds the puppy aloft with its fluffy golden coat. It looks like a loaf of fur bread. This... This is the one. Yeah, that one. The lady knows her canines. If she says that's the one, then that pup is the pick of the litter. It's out of yours. Should be easy to train. Set it up with the herd as soon as you can. Its instincts will kick in in no time. Jesse sets the dog down, and it starts chasing its own... Well, it doesn't have a tail. It spins, chasing its own nub. A real genius. Oh, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I step into the pen to get a closer look at the little ball of fuzz. All the while the dog galumps along, right under Jessie's feet. You two seem to be quite the pair. I hope it bonds with Marion as much as it seems to be bonding with my ankles. The pup nips at her lower legs and seems to take interest in the sniffing her posterior. A sight I try not to dwell on until I notice... Oh, oh hell. You're a tail, Jessie. Tuck it away. <clears throat> I watch the appendage shrink away in the blink of an eye. I'm left wondering just how much excitement will trigger the next ex accidental swoosh of a tail. As he gathers up the squirming dog, and we pay our thanks to Mr. Glenn. There's no worries, Mr. Campbell and Miss McLeod. 
Least I can do for a returning hero. Would have served myself at one for the leg. He taps his left he taps his left calf with his cane, and we hear the hollow sound of wood. <laughs> oh my! I'm so sorry, Mr. Glenn. I'd forgotten he'd lost a leg as a child. In honor, sir, no need to call anyone heroes around these parts. We've all, we've all been through enough to call each other heroes. On that I swear. <laughs> Start doing the... <laughs> Start doing the moonwalk backwards with a puppy. Ugh, 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 mm, feel good episode. I avoid further discussion of military service by taking Jesse by the arm, waving towards Glenn and making our own and making our way back down the road towards our homes. Paparinos, pa sweet paparinos. When we get back, we find Marion whistling while scrubbing dishes. The house is warm and smells like cinnamon. Marion! Ah! Mm, excuse me. Crivens, you scared me! Don't sneak up on me, Jesse! We have a surprise for you. Me? What? Jesse takes the puppy from me and holds it aloft in front of her, si in front of her sister. The dog has gotten sleepy during the last few minutes of our journey. It looks like a fuzzy potato in Jesse's outstretched hands. Oh my good lord! For a moment, I worry that Marion may balk at having a new mouth to feed, and a little soul to care for. But she wears her heart on her sleeve, and we can already see it melting from here. Jesse and I laugh. Marion puts her hands out to take the dog, and pulls them back to her apron. R really For me? I... I don't understand. For you, it's your, it's for hurting your cattle. Well, not it. He, he's a boy. You can name him whatever you want. I can't believe it. Here, take him. Mary accepts the wheezing potato and cradles it in her arms, like a scene out of a moving picture. Marion cries right on cue. I just can't believe. She struggles to speak through her sobs. Oh, oh, Jesse, thank you so much. Malcolm, thank you. I don't know what to say. Seeing her so thrilled warms my heart. The dog is more than a dog. It's her new friend and her companion. The two of them are being all adorable. What shall I call it? Whatever you like. It looks just like a loaf of bread. Well, don't call it bread. It'll get confused when you're baking. <laughs> really, Malcolm? Come on. Crusty? Sourdough? Oat meal? The pup yawns. Blakey? Butter? Toast? Oh my god, that's the name of- They're calling him Toast! Toast? The dog barks and starts to wriggle. Yes! Toast! The dog seems as dumb as rocks, but I can't get over how in love Marion has fallen with the fluffy animal. I know the feeling. Good lord, those things are shaggy. Marion picks up Toast, and we follow her outside. She sets him down near the herd. Let's see what he can do. Well, what he can do is mark his territory, chase his tail nub, and bark a lot. Come on, champ. I'll show you how it's done. Wait. Now? adorable. Thankfully, Jesse stays human and proceeds to jog in circles around the cows, who remain nonplussed. Toast runs around following Jesse, taking breaths to sniff the grass and bark at nothing. Oh my, you two are so cute! Unfortunately, after a few spins around the herd, the cows do take notice of Jesse. They begin to follow her lead. A couple more rounds and Toast seems to be aware of his own instincts too. He nips at the biggest cow's heel, which gets her moving towards the pen. Good boy, Toast. It's a spectacle, all right. But it's also nice to see Jesse being so playful, so alive. I've been worrying about her safety and mine, so much that I've had little time to think about us. This is what I love about her, her joy, her spirit. She's fearless, brave. Maybe everything I've forgotten how to be. Everything I need back in my life. Who knew having a werewolf for a girlfriend would force me to re-examine my own choices, my own life? I know who I am with her. Who am I without her?
<laughs> Toast has managed to wrangle the entire herd into the pen with a little help. Jesse closes the latch and Toast runs after her. What a wonderful dog! George jumps back into Marion's arms, and the two of them share another cuddle session. Jesse sidles up to me, and I wrap my arm around her. Thank you both. A million times over, it'll be nice to have some more help on the farm. And a new friend. Both Marion and her dog make moon eyes toward each other. Oh. Alright guys, we're gonna save it right here. This has been an absolutely adorable episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!